let me explain quickly my experience in New York, so to speak, and, and how this is going. So it's all, it's all smiles and hugs and friendship and love until you tell the truth, which is, of course, that's what I do, you know. And then there has been this feeble-minded attempt to call into question my intentions. Now here's the thing about that. You cannot know what somebody's intentions are unless they explain it to you and then their actions support that explanation. So you just, you know, it's the old school thinking of, you know, look at, someone, look at the results of somebody's behavior and you can tell what their intentions are. And intentions matter maybe as much as anything, maybe more than anything else. So if somebody behaves in such a way, it's very important to understand what their intentions are. So I'm going to explain that to you real quick. And as you can very easily see by watching this podcast and also, you know, starting to take, uh, take part in our programs and our company that we're, we're forming right now, you'll see that my actions map on exactly to the intentions I'm about to explain. And then I'm going to explain the intentions that I see uh, uh, from, let's, let's just stick with New York for now, although it's way more widespread than that. Here's the thing. Here's where I stand ethically, okay, as, as an educator, okay. So I am first and foremost a parent. I'm a parent of a kid in ballet. I'm a husband of a wife who loves ballet and trains in ballet, right? And it's my strong opinion that you and your children and anyone that you love who loves ballet has the right to the same quality of education that my family does. I think there's no debate to be had there, right? Your child, your children, have the same right to a quality education as mine does. And that, that really informs my worldview on all things. There, there isn't a me without the fact that I'm a parent and a husband. This is what informs me. From, from the moment I was married and then became a parent, my whole worldview changed dramatically. So this is how I see it. And this is why I'm pushing as hard as I am. And I, by the way, I haven't even really begun to put pressure on the ballet world in terms of education. Uh, and you know what that's going to entail is just me continuing to present my work. So here's a, a few things to key in on: the difference between what I'm doing and what's out there. Okay. I am using my method on my own family. The people who I love the most in the world, I am teaching them precisely the same thing, the same method, as I'm about to share with all of you, what I, sh what I shared with Misty, which they all saw and witnessed. By they, I mean the New York Ballet community. That's how you understand that I'm telling you the truth. Now, in addition to that, I'm not just teaching them quietly somewhere that you can't see. They are demonstrating the method. My son and my wife are the ones demonstrating the method from scratch. You see? Now, which is totally unheard of. Right? Normally, a teacher will bring in a, a, a professional, I'm not even going to go there, dancer to demonstrate their sort of nonsensical exercises that have no connection or bearing to the true fundamentals. And that's kind of what it is. This is what you're seeing right now on, on, online. Just a bunch of... See, the way that I see these combinations that the dancers are giving, number one, they're dancers, they're not teachers, they have no understanding. They don't possess the fundamentals themselves, therefore anything they give you is not connected to them. And, and this is the issue. It's kind of like, um, for you parents, when your child is like one and a half years old and two and they start talking and they just string together a bunch of words that don't make a lot of sense, but it, it's cute with a two-year-old. It's not cute when that's how an adult person dances and expresses themselves in terms of classical dance. It, it's just a bunch of movement that doesn't have any connection to 
the science of ballet or the art of ballet or anything at all. So let me restate this one more time. The, the reason that I'm willing to even collaborate with the institutions in New York and, 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 and everywhere else is because of this ethic that I want as many families, not just the children, but let's, we can stick with children for a minute, to have access to the same quality of education that my child does and my wife. That's the reason. And that's my intention, full stop, right? And by the way, you know what I'm sharing, and I'm, I'm only willing to share this with the institutions, is the fundamentals. That's it. There's, the, my method isn't just fundamentals. It's the whole art. It's, it's, it, it spans the whole vast space between your first day in class and your last day as a professional. That's what the method is. I'm not sharing any of that. That's for myself and the group of people who I choose to work with. But the fundamentals, but there's, there, there isn't a conversation to be had over there without the fundamentals first. So, fundamentals. Now, whether or not New York has the wisdom to accept this offer, that's, their, that's up to them, you know. But from a purely, let's say, competitive or business standpoint, which is a real component to all this, what would make more sense, had I not the ethics, is to just absolutely put a wall around all of my knowledge and experience and just share it with, again, the group of people, dancers, teachers, who I choose to work with. That would be the smart business thing to do. But because of the fact that I'm a parent and I have to see the world this way, I'm willing to share to a certain extent. Okay, but, I, but it, it, it's not <laughs> to the extent where I'm gonna go knocking on doors and say, would you, no. Ultimately, ultimately, you as a dancer, you as a parent, you as a student need to decide for yourself what you want to do and how you want to conduct your life. So I, I, I live by a, a set of ethics where it is not for me to, to tell or to demand that other adults live their life a certain way. Everyone has to conduct their life the way they see fit. However, when the way they conduct their life touches my life, then I'm going to say something if, if I feel I need to. And I have a particular sensitivity to the way children are treated. And by children, I don't just mean little children. I mean children, teenagers who become adults. And, you know, and even adults who are in ballet are, are mistreated in a lot of ways. And I have a problem with that, a real problem with that. So. Um, now the flip side of that is I'm absolutely not going to be dictated to by other adults either. I'm going to do and say exactly what I choose to and I will deal with the consequences of that, whatever they are. So the way in which children are educated and teenagers are educated and adults are educated, this is a hill that I'm willing to die on, except that I'm not going to be the one that dies on it, right? And so for, for, for I know there's concerns, there's a, I get a lot of concerns every day from a lot of people and I want to try to calm you if I can a little bit and just to say like look and the concerns are something like this that you know wh whomever New York whatever it doesn't really matter are gonna try and put some pressure on me it's just, I'm not going anywhere they are if that's what has to happen so the, the situation is very simple we are gonna collaborate or we are gonna compete and as it stands right now, we are competing, which means I'm gonna conduct myself and my business and everything that I do on that premise. We are not friends, we are competing now. And what we're competing for is the health and well-being of everyone in the ballet world. And all you have to do is, there isn't a debate to be had, you see, there's just look at the results. All you have to do is examine the results. The methods prominent in the world right now, the specific thinking, produces one thing consistently, one thing specifically, injury, physical injury, psychological injury, and of course it has, um, it has drawn ballet as an art into a place of disrepute, which means, you know, 
audiences are not you know, rushing out to see ballet. And now with, with this pandemic, you see it's, it's really gonna focus us or it should focus us into how we need to move forward. And of course, it just happens to be that I've already been working on this for many years. And so, you know, we're, we're kind of in a position to, to, mm, to craft a new ballet world according to our new reality and do it successfully and, and have ballet thrive as an art form. So, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with this. And that, so that's my intention, plain and simple. And I think you can see that in my actions my words and the results of my work and this is just going to continue. So for me to advance this agenda that I have, which is to reform ballet education, all that I have to do is just continue presenting my work and all I need to do to do that is teach my own family. Now obviously once we can get into studios and life begins to return to, or not return, but we move forward together more people are going to be invited into the tent, so to speak, and will be able to work with me in person, and it will grow that way. But just as a statement of fact, I don't need to do anything more than teach my family to advance this project. And that's what I'm going to do. So, as always, I invite the ballet world to collaborate on this establishing of the fundamentals of integrating it into your methodologies. The alternative is that I continue to demonstrate the differences between the results of this, my own method, and the way that methods are taught now. Um, so that's going to be up to the ballet world to decide how you want to proceed. But that's my position, officially. I'm a parent, I'm a husband, and this is my concern, and this is how I'm going to proceed. That's it.